student of Zen master Dogen, 13th century Japanese monk who brought uh, Zen teaching from China to Japan and then started the monastic tradition um, in Japan. And then later um, it is called Soto School. So one of the two uh, major schools of Zen along with uh, Rinzai. <coughs> I've been translating his work uh, for more than 50 years, so publishing some uh, books, um, starting with uh, Moon in a Dewdrop and recently uh, Treasury of the True Dharma Eye, his life work. So Dogen's teaching is, um, I think any kind of Zen teaching is, uh, came from the uh, Chinese Taoist, but also uh, Buddhist tradition, which came from India, which also started from uh, <coughs> Vedic tradition along with uh, other traditions in Buddhism and Hinduism. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, non-duality is an important, uh, most basic part of his teaching. And Dogen especially is uh, very clear about um, inseparableness of practice and then enlightenment. So uh, he has a concept of circle of the way, which is in every moment of our practice, um, we experience four elements, um, aspiration for enlightenment, practice enlightenment, and nirvana. Nirvana can mean uh, many things, uh, according to uh, different teachers, different traditions. But for Dogen, it means a non-dual experience. So his idea is that uh, each moment we experience aspiration, practice, enlightenment, and non-dual experience. So that's good news. Every moment of our practice is uh, enlightenment. Bad news is that uh, we usually are not aware of it and then think about pains or um, sleepiness or thinking of some other things and then think that we, we had a bad meditation experience. But uh, Dogen never talks about uh, bad meditation, bad zazen. Um, for him, every moment when we take a form of an awakened one and then practice, that is full awakening. So, uh, according to Dogen's teaching, in meditation, the distinction between large and small, um, others and then the self, uh, momentariness and timelessness, life and death, becomes uh, rather obscure and uh, insignificant. And uh, that is uh, non-dual experience. 
I, um, I myself feel that um, dualism, that means thing, uh, to see things as two. Two means many, I guess, you know. Um, and non-dualism is to see things not separate or maybe one. There's some kind of uh, huge difference between one and the not separate, but uh, not separate is one in a way, arguably. So I like to call this um, kind of dualism and non-dualism plural pluralism, because we are talking about dualism as kind of seeing things many. So pluralism may be more accurate, and then non-dualism, uh, singularism. But maybe uh, <coughs> with all respect, uh, non-dualism is fine, you have this conference. <coughs> Well, the uh, reality is uh, maybe uh, is whole, and then, but our consciousness, we uh, we divide them, and then we uh, that's how we uh, function every day. Language and then intellect uh, is um, by nature dualistic. So. Um, we experience our uh, normal experiences dualistic. So there is certainly duality, and then um, <clears throat> there is, through this uh, dualistic thinking, we, uh, we experience non-duality. They may not be separate and they cannot be separated, but we separate them. So there is separation. We cannot deny separation. The circle in the Zen tradition uh, represents completeness of each moment. You could uh, say um, enlightenment represents enlightenment, or represents maybe the wholeness of experience. Maybe you call it non-duality or singularism. Um, but I think it's more kind of direct, you know, just drawing a circle in the air, or drawing a, a circle on the paper with uh, the brush and ink. And it's an experience of going beyond intellectual divisions. You know. mm -hmm. And uh, because it does not depend upon language, you can maybe uh, communicate more directly, kind of uh, bypassing intellect. So I think uh, viewing the uh, Zen circle, called the Enso, meaning circle symbol, um, is a kind of um, very demanding ex um, experience because there is no explanation. So you need to um, live with it. Yesterday um, we did this um, drawing Zen circle. Um, workshop here at the conference. 
And uh, so I asked everyone to draw circles on their own and then explain maybe what they think about circles. So uh, such a kind of diverse view of circles and then different ways of creating circles. And then I asked them to draw a Zen circle which is done decisively, just once, and not going back and correcting, and just one. So it's a simple exercise. And in a way, it's not so creative, because just drawing a circle, about the same size as everyone else. So it's a drawing a Zen circle. It's Yesterday, I sort of discovered that uh, uh, it's a creative experience without using creativity. <laughs>
go beyond thinking and even go beyond pursuing, but also you are pursuing too because you are consciously sitting still and straight up. So, yeah, in Zen always there's a kind of question. Uh, if everyone is already enlightened, why do we have to practice? <laughs> and that's a good dilemma, but uh, maybe uh, the Zen answer is that um, Practice is enlightenment, but enlightenment is practice also. So you need to have an endeavor. And uh, this um, Freedom makes us kind of um, enjoyable in life and then uh, humorous too. You know, there's always some humor and paradox. I think the, you know, among uh, different uh, schools of Buddhism, Maybe the uniqueness of uh, Zen is a paradox. To view everything as a paradox. So, um, <clears throat> and paradox is sometimes funny, you know, like, uh, okay, hunting dog is running around the forest. But if you put it upside down, and then say, the forest is running around the hunting dog. That is funny, right? But uh, in a way that both are true. Uh, we uh, normally see only one, one way, but there is always the other way. Uh, so when uh, we hear about uh, Zen uh, teacher saying, mountain walks, or mountain flows on the water. Um, it's strange and then weird, but uh, in a way it's true. I mean, there's always uh, <coughs> uh, a truth on the other side. And then in a way, being free from the normal conception uh, we can see the other side, which is often uh, strange and funny. So I'm an artist. So um, I like to uh, do things differently and say things differently. So if you excuse me, that's sort of um, what usually artists do. <laughs> so, um, traditionally this Zen circle is uh, done by a Zen master, usually a male Zen master, and then uh, with um, black ink on white paper. Then I thought, well, why not colors? <laughs> in fact, I was asked by Zen Hospice uh, in San Francisco to put some circle uh, paintings. And then I thought, well, maybe black circle is not really cheerful for people who are in the process of dying. So why not using colors? So 
so I started using uh, multicolors sometimes, like uh, uh, red and orange with some gold. I like to put gold. which is my signature color. And uh, why so? Because I live in California. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I feel that uh, we live in this very diverse society, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, different colors. Uh, seems uh, right, you know. And then so I did the uh, rainbow circle, rainbow colors, which became a symbol for uh, diversity uh, practice at San Francisco Zen Center. So, and then I really enjoy creating uh, circles and then often people ask me to let them use as uh, their logos and, and the book covers and so forth. So uh, about a month ago, maybe two weeks ago in Antwerp I had a workshop and then uh, showed people how to do this multicolor circle. And then I told them, well, somebody invented the uh, wheel. We don't know who, but, but uh, I invented the circle. Yeah, of course, it's a silly joke, but anyway. I think uh, maybe first time, I think uh, people were maybe a few people were kind of against the traditional things. So, you know, just uh, um, say, I don't like it, and this uh, multicolor circle, and then I said, don't worry, I live in California, so uh, I can give it to you. And then uh, one of the Zen teachers said, Beyond my corpse, something like that, maybe. <laughs> if you push, I will be dead, or something like that. That's what he said. Um, but not so much. People like, uh, I think, uh, multicolor circles uh, that are in many Zen centers. I uh, recently wrote a book, um, The Heart Sutra, a comprehensive guide to the classic of uh, Mahayana Buddhism, which is coming from Shambhala Publications next year. And then I talk about the inspiration of the sutra. And then uh, I'm addressing that the Heart Sutra really uh, presents this uh, maybe experience of non-duality, no eyes, no ears, and kind of denying everything, you know. Um, and um, John Halifax Roshi and I retranslated the Heart Sutra uh, Usually it so, sounds so negative and nihilistic, all the negations. And then we kind of try to make it more positive. You know, the Heart Sutra is a positive experience of um, going beyond duality to me. So uh, more like use the word beyond or freedom from. So I'll be presenting this new translation. 
And then um, the Heart Sutra, in my view, uh, mostly focus on this uh, non-duality, uh, singularity. <coughs> However, it also, if you read it carefully, it really talks about uh, being free from singularity, free from non-duality. And free from actually duality and non-duality, which was uh, you were talking about. So, what what is it? You know, what is uh, freedom from uh, singularity and non-duality? And I think we need uh, uh, singularity and plurality. We need plurality. We need uh, ethics, boundaries. You know, distinctions which is better, which is uh, correct, which is more just. We, uh, we need uh, in our daily lives uh, definitely plural views. And then, um, on the other hand, if we are stuck to this, we are um, limited. We become just us, and then other, others are not important. Uh, so we need uh, singularity. So often it is thought as, okay, maybe take one step, that is plurality. Another step, you go beyond, and it's singularity. And then if you, uh, it's like a dance. If you misstep, it creates a problem, real, you know, boundaries are, uh, uh, violated and uh, uh, all kinds of mistakes happen. So uh, this uh, distinction is very important. You know, when we become one and we, when we become separate, it's very important. So the dance is, uh, in a way, uh, not easy, you know, uh, because Often we misstep. So ideally, uh, we become so familiar with it. You know, maybe boundaries. We don't have to worry about it because we don't violate, and we become free from boundaries. It's not that we violate boundary and become free, but we just become free because we don't uh, kind of think of violating. And then the uh, maybe singularity and plurality kind of dancing uh, gracefully and freely, and then they're not separate. They're not in opposition. And I think that is the maybe uh, what we need to experience. And then that is the lessons we can draw from the Heart Sutra. <clears throat>